Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is about donkeys. You know, I like donkeys and actually I have a very good experience with them. Um, now, you know, like people, they think donkeys are really stupid, but <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's stupid to believe that there is somebody, if you believe in him, he will give you a lot of women and they will have a very big uh, bomb. I don't think donkeys believe in that. But still, our topic is going to be about donkeys, which means a donkey here is involved, but it's not by his choice. Uh, hello everybody from Indonesia and actually this is why I am doing this early so people who they are from Indonesia they are with us <clears throat> otherwise I know most of people now especially like the majority of those who follow me they are already uh, in bed mostly so what the donkey have to do with our story today you know uh, I mentioned before something Muhammad he said but what we will do we are going to try to analyze how Muhammad and what he think about his followers. You know, every teacher, in case we want to call Muhammad a teacher, he uh, <clears throat> he speak to his uh, student in their level. But no matter how you know i mean how bad the student are <clears throat> we should not go and exaggerate in lies in order to convince a student to do something as an example you know when we were kids in the middle east they used to scare the kids from rats so they say to him if you don't do this we will put you in the rat room and once the teacher she thought I am going to be scared so she decided because I was supposed to be a troublemaker according to her she decided to punish me and put me in the rat room the rat room simply is like a small tiny room under the stairs where the school they put you know like it's like a storage room have like an old chairs old tables you know uh, dark so she took me there and she put me in that room I was like I don't know maybe nine years old I'm, I'm not sure I don't really but anyway so she came after 15 minutes suppose this is my punishment and supposedly I would be terrified and when she came in she found I have a mice in my hand <laughs> and I throw it at her <laughs> and she is the one who was terrified and scared like crazy so they lie to you to scare you about something scary supposedly but it's not really scary i mean mice is a mice it's not really a scary it's just a poor little animal but teachers in this case we will talk about we are just kids and kids you know like i mean they get scared from anything um like you know in the middle east uh, so the child will not go away from the house they say to him there's a beast he will kidnap you uh, you can ask Middle Eastern you know this is how they make awareness for children is not to stay away uh, because how they can explain to them that in the country we are we have a lot of a child molesters the same as the Prophet so in order to to make a kid not to go away from home you fabricate a lie and you know it's a lie and you make him believe in it now, what does this have to do with Muhammad? You see, the Muslims believe that Muhammad is a prophet of God, which means whatever he say is coming from God. But is it really the case? I don't think so. Let us read this hadith. The prophet said, speaking to his followers, Isn't he, isn't he who raises his head before the Imam, which means before the Imam, the Imam is the leader of the prayer, the one who stands in the front, afraid that Allah may transform his head into 
a donkey. Here we see that Muhammad not only he is playing as a false prophet because supposedly he is telling something God told him. This is not a teacher teaching a bunch of kids trying to scare them of something so they will not do something wrong. This is a man speaking to men. And when a man he claimed to be a prophet of God and yet he claimed that if you raise your head before the Imam that will make you or make your head the head of a donkey the purpose is very simple the purpose he is trying to scare you so you will not raise your head before the Imam the leader which is him finish the prayer so now Muhammad he installed in the heart of the followers a fear that no matter what never raise your head before the imam finish otherwise allah will transform your head into a head of muslim donkey here we have to notice two things at least muhammad he make fun of his followers he don't respect them and muhammad he believe that they are too much naive to the point they can believe in such a story there is no way Muhammad he will say such a thing unless he is sure that the ones who is behind him are a bunch of donkeys you know what I mean imagine you are exist in the time mm, you see Forget about Christians, forget about the Jews, forget about the Hindus, forget. Let us go to the time of the Greek. I mean, imagine you are in the Greek time, and then the teacher he is saying to you, a philosopher, Aflaton, saying to you, if you raise your head before your master, you will be cursed and you will transform into donkey. I mean, people will laugh at him. So what we notice here, Muhammad, he understands very well how naive is the society he is living in and because he understand very well that those people they believe in anything he is taking advantage of them and he is making such a stupid lie and now after 1400 years how many muslims they left their head before the imam you can watch any movie any video on youtube or like there is a live broadcast for the kaaba you will see many Muslims, they raise their head, thousands, they raise their head every day before the Imam, if not millions. It's impossible actually to, that everybody raise their head at the same time because your head is down and you do not know if the Imam is done or not. Yet until now, we would not, did not see one Muslim, his head became a head of a donkey. So here, if we ask the Muslims, was Muhammad lying or he was making fun or he was telling the truth if the Muslim they say he is telling the truth well that's mean you Muslims are really crazy go right now raise your head before the Imam and you will see nothing will happen to you if a Muslim will say to us Muhammad was uh, exaggerating which mean he is lying to us I mean this is horrible which one which one you as a Muslim you choose for yourself Muhammad always he disrespect his followers and he made fun of them another example Muhammad he don't like garlic okay so what we will do now, how we can make the Muslims don't come to the mosque eating garlic. Muhammad he claimed that angels don't like garlic. Angels. Don't like garlic. Read this with me and love. And here we see another example of Muhammad making fun of his followers, claiming 
that he have a bunch of angels who they are coming from Romania and they are uh, relative to Mr. Dracula. So it's offensive. This is an offensive plant. What kind, what kind of a prophet he says that angels will be hurt, harmed by garlic? He said, who is, who is talking now, Muhammad, he who eats of this offensive plant between two brackets, i.e. garlic, and etc. He said, he who eat onion and garlic and leek should not approach our mosque for the angels are harmed by the same things as the children of Adam. And no, you know, for me, I saw uh, a movie once about Dracula, and supposedly Dracula don't like garlic. But angels of God can be infected or affected by uh, garlic. Uh, that need a lot of explanation from anyone who believe in Muhammad to be a prophet of God. Obviously, Muhammad he is really not respecting his followers and he believed that they are a bunch of kids and whatever he says to them they have to take and accept what garlic we are talking about angels of god and yet you tell me an angel who will be scared of garlic another example Muhammad he claimed that the angels is not coming to his house because there was a little puppy under his bed. Muhammad for some time the angel is not coming to his house. So, Muhammad now, he want to explain why the angel Jibreel is not coming to his house. Or let us say, he's trying to investigate why. Aisha reported that Jibreel made a promise with Allah Messenger to come to him at definite hour. Okay, see, Jibreel is a businessman. You know, I will come to you at say six o'clock. He will be there six o'clock, never late. That hour came, but he did not visit him. And there was in his hand, the hand of Allah Apostle, a staff. He threw it from his hand and said, never. He was upset. <laughs> never. Has Allah of his or his messenger angels over broken their promise? Muhammad now is worried. Allah broke his promise. Then he cast a glance and he found the puppy under his coat. By the way, this is a false translation. Um, it's not really under the coat, it is under his bed. Coat. His cot is mean bed? I don't know if the translation is correct. I don't know what really cot mean. Cot. Is cot mean bed? I'm not sure. If it's mean bed, that's mean this correct translation. And he said, Aisha. And by the way, supposedly this dead, this, do this dog is dead. You know? The story is actually more complicated than this. Supposedly here it says a certain hour, but the fact the angel he stopped coming for some time, some you know, a few few days, few weeks. And now we have a dead dog under the bed of Muhammad. But let us say it's a living dog. Let us say it's not dead. So there is a puppy under the bed of Muhammad. And Muhammad said to Aisha, when this dog enter here, she said, by Allah, I do not know. Then he commanded and it was turned out. Jibreel came and Allah messenger said to him, you promised me and I waited for you. What's wrong with you, Jibreel? I waited for you. 
but you did not come whereupon he said it was a dog Jibreel he said it was the dog the dog in your house which prevented me to come for we angels do not enter a house have a dog or a picture <laughs> Now, I am assuming that if I am a believer, I have to agree that an angel of God who have 600 wings, who is a mighty angel, he cannot enter a house, have a little puppy. I mean, truly, truly, I'm really convinced. Obviously, Muhammad is saying the truth. Now here we see, we spoke in the beginning that Muhammad, he speak to a society of a low IQ. But obviously, he himself is a low IQ too. Because, you see, I mean, you don't have to come with such a story that the angel is not coming because of a dog and a picture. What picture? And what dog? I mean, dogs are everywhere. The, the earth have a dog anyway. The whole earth. What about the what about the angels will not enter to the earth because we have dogs in the earth. So obviously, those stories are meant to make fun of you as a Muslim, make fun of me if I believe, and make fun of God. Because if Allah is God, as Muslims they believe, and then they say to us that the messengers of God cannot enter a place, have a garlic, have a dog, have a picture, or onion. I mean, what kind of angels they are. And by the way, I am not worried about any of the angels of Allah to come to my house because I have my TV on which is a picture and I have garlic in my kitchen so I'm totally secure and safe so when somebody he come to me and he says he's a Muslim what does that mean exactly to be a Muslim to be a Muslim, it's mean that you believe that angels are like a Dracula who fear garlic. And by the way, I think, I mean, I don't think that Muhammad, he copied the story of a Dracula from anyone. I mean, I think, I think they are copying him. I mean, how, this is amazing. How the prophet knew this? Garlic? If we ask a Muslim, how in the world a big, powerful angel, I'm talking about big, I mean, the Muhammad, he says in the Quran, when he came, he closed the horizon. And even the Hadith confirmed that. He covered the horizon. This is so huge. Yet he cannot enter a house, have a puppy. Who, 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 who? He, Angel Jibreel, come in. Who, who? I cannot, oh, sorry, I cannot. You have a puppy. Here we notice something very clear that Muhammad not only disrespect his followers, not only he disrespect his God, claiming that the angels of God are very silly and stupid and cowards and uh, useless, uh, he claimed that the message of God delayed because of ho, 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 little puppy. I mean, I have to agree. I mean, what we can see, you like it, you don't, puppies are dangerous and I don't blame the angel of Allah to be scared put yourself in his shoes or his angels I mean his wings <laughs> oh, 
property. Look at this. You have an angel come into your house, and then this angel he see this. How in the world this angel will be able to enter your house? I mean, we have to be fair and we have to be realistic. This is very scary. And angels cannot enter a house, have a puppy. You know, uh, you know, we are Middle Eastern, right? And you know, my family, we work as pirate. Actually, part of the Caribbean, like you know, taken inspired from my family story. So we as pirate, once we enter a bank to rob it, but we saw inside the puppy like this, and we could not get in. And since that time, all banks in America they are not getting any security cameras or police. They have a little puppy in the corner. Neither us, neither the angels can get in. Happy for you. The bank is secure. So, I am mentioning those stories because if Muhammad is a prophet of God and he claimed that he is speaking of God and knowledge of God, and yet he claimed that the delay, a, a delay of God message, God himself could not deliver to Muhammad a message because of a puppy. What kind of God we are talking about? Imagine Donald Trump, he sent his army and the leader of the US Air Army in the front. And they arrive in the front of somebody, a king, to deliver a message, but they could not get in because our army have a weakness. Please come in. He is waiting for you, for your message. You say, sorry, I cannot. You have a puppy. My friend, if you think Muhammad is a prophet of God, you better and uh, and Jibreel is an angel you better stop believing in Jibreel and believing in this puppy because this puppy obviously he defeated Jibreel you see this puppy can go where Jibreel cannot go which mean wherever this puppy is Jibreel have no place people are you getting my point are you getting my point if this puppy now he enter out in the backyard of the house of Muhammad the angels cannot go there too so wherever the puppy goes angels run away so who is the weak why the angel of Allah cannot even get rid of this puppy he is useless <clears throat> debate the representative of the antichrist you will be in trouble instantly enlightening times ahead don't be afraid this guy is talking to me <laughs> who is the representative of antichrist what are you talking about anyway so as you see Stupidity is believed these days because to believe in this garbage, they call you believer. And I believe to believe in this garbage, you have to be consider yourself stupid. All those things we saw, actually, we can mention tons of things. Muhammad he said, and obviously they present nothing but stupidity. But all those things we mentioned prove to us nothing except that Muhammad he don't respect his followers and he don't consider them people of knowledge. He considered them a bunch of kids, he make fun of them, and whatever he says they have to accept. 
the prophet said the prophet said right now I would like to see Muslims leaving comment down there and please if you don't mind I would like you to answer us why a little puppy maybe we should put it in the screen <laughs> why a little puppy defeated angel of Allah what do you think about that Muslims how such a thing can happen how you believe in that let us put this the, the question in the screen so Muslims can pause their comment and the, the video <clears throat> All right. Why not little po people? Sorry, little puppy. Okay, let me fix it. Puppy, puppy. Why a little puppy? He was able to defeat an angel of Allah, and Allah Himself could not deliver the message. How silly, how stupid, how funny. You tell me, Muslims, what do you think? Is that is that the powerful Allah? He sent his angel, yet the angel could not go through because there is a puppy. The angel cannot enter to a mosque because somebody ate garlic. And for sure, we can mention tons of more stories as an example. Uh, actually in the same hadith it says that angels don't enter a house have an a picture <laughs> my friend the whole earth is a picture what about if the angel look at them uh, in the water he will see a picture that's mean the angels cannot go anywhere over water because water is nothing but a reflection it's like a mirror I mean, this is really silly. However, when it's come to Islam, silly is scientifically approven and scientifically correct. But for me, I laugh and I wonder what happened to the brain of a human being. How a human being can accept such a thing to be coming from God? Your God, Muslims, fear puppies. His message, his delivery cannot come to the Prophet because of a puppy. And from on from now on. I mean we have to be careful all of us if you like angels to come to your house please be careful be careful angels will not stop by because simply they fear puppies so for the sake of your family for the sake of Allah please Allah cannot send his message to you he cannot send his angels to protect you or even to carry on your prayer because you have a puppy or you have a picture. Islam, my friend. Islam, obviously, is the only true religion. And in Islam, the only angel, in the only angel, in, I think, in the whole world, whatever believe in angels, is fearing garlic and... Oh, hold on, I forgot something. 
how many of you remember how Muhammad first time when he saw the angel anyone remember where he saw him first time I know most of you will say uh, in the in the cave of Hara right in the cave actually this is not the first time the first time Muhammad he saw an angel it was in his bedroom and he see a guy sitting in the corner of his room and he told his wife that he is seeing something his wife Khadija she said to him well next time you see him let me know so the Prophet he saw him again let me search for the reference so I can show it to you I don't think we can find it in English but we can find it in Arabic so simply when uh, uh, when Muhammad he saw an angel he told his wife I see him right now <clears throat> this is a Sira Nabawiya the Ibn Hisham the book name value number one page number two three nine Khadija she said to her husband when you see the angel of Allah next time let me know and Jibreel came so the Prophet he told her he's here so his wife Khadija she ordered her husband to do the following she said stand up and sit in the top of my left leg or thigh and then the Prophet he said and she said to him do you see him he said yes I do she said move and sit in the top of my right thigh or thigh or leg and he said and she said to him do you see him he said yes I do she said sit in the top of me in my lap and he said and she said to him do you see him he said yes i do and then she started taking off her clothes stripping and she asked him and the prophet was sitting in the top of her and then she said to him do you see him he said no she said the glory to allah this is an angel he is not a shaitan now the funny is the name of this story or the chapter is Imtihanu Khadija Burhanul Wahi, which means the proof that the Prophet here received an inspiration of Allah. Here, what is the legs and the boobs and the lap of Khadija? However, here what we learn from this story, and we are mentioning this story because of the angel. If you ask the Muslims, what is the point of the story? I mean, how Khadija she was able to come to the conclusion that this is an angel. They said angels are shy. Don't you see the women she is stripping? They want to have sex. So the angel was sitting and watching when he sat in the top of her right leg, left leg, in the top of her. But the second she started taking off her clothes, the angel he ran away. And here again we see how Muhammad and his followers they fabricated stories in order to make Muhammad look like a prophet. I mean, if the prophet who see the angel he could not recognize the angel to be an angel. How the wife who did not even see the guy in the corner she come to the conclusion by stripping. And what about you strip from the first second? What 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 the point of like sit in the top of my right leg and my left leg and sit in the top of me? Just take off your clothes. If you leave, then that's it. But obviously this story is a stupid story it's not even good for bedtime but again those stories present to us how low the IQ of a person who believe in it and how, how low the IQ of the society around them and here I'm talking about people who they are naive you know I mean who in the world anyone can believe in this imagine I come to you yesterday I saw an angel in my in my house 
and now I, by the way I cannot uh, discover if he's an angel or not because I don't have a wife so I need, I need to hire a wife now so I can sit now I know why sometime I saw in the movie a guy was sitting in the lap of a woman aha uh -huh, this is the Prophet Muhammad imagine how silly a man his name is Muhammad sitting in the top of the leg the right leg and then he moved to the left leg of his wife as if we are uh, talking to a kid okay Habibi Muhammad sit in my right leg do you see him Habibi Muhammad mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay now move to my left leg Muhammad do you see him Muhammad mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay Habibi Muhammad now sit in the top of me and face me do you see him now Muhammad mm -hmm. okay Muhammad now look at me and I'm going to take off my clothes tell me Habibi Muhammad do you see him Mm -hmm. He's gone, Muhammad. Mm -hmm. He's gone. Are you sure he's gone? Mm -hmm. He's gone. I don't see him no more. Okay, Muhammad. Uh, Muhammad Habibi, he is an angel. I mean, who is the silly and who is the stupid? You tell me. That's why I say to myself, this video should be called My Prophet Funny or Making Fun of Me. Now, please, Abdul, I want you to leave your comment, whatever this video is posted in, doesn't matter when you see this video, please post your comment and show us where is the intelligence in the stories of your prophet and how in the world you Muslims can believe in such a madness. And sadly, me, myself, I cannot discover if there's an angel in my corner or he is the devil because I don't even have a woman to sit in the top of her leg and now I know the benefit of having a woman in the house and now I know why Muhammad have 13 of them because wherever he go instead of carrying a woman wherever with him will go he have a woman in every corner the angels come he sit in the top of the leg and then he can discover if it is a genuine angel or it is the devil with this we say thank you guys for being here Please download the video and don't forget to share it and watch it and show everybody how silly the prophet who is making fun, let us say, who is funny or making fun of you, Muslims, not me for sure. Thank you very much and may the Lord bless you all. Christ is Lord and Islam is false and the prophet is not funny. He is just a liar. Thank you.